Patrick, should we wait for the Zoom to record? Or we just do we just do it on Facebook and then? Okay. Um, I think we're just gonna go with Facebook this time. Okay. Yeah, you guys can go ahead. Yep. Perfect. Awesome. Hi everyone. Uh, today we have Dr. Moore here. He's a rheumatologist here at SLU. Uh, my name is Megan and this is Shreya and we're going to be just asking a few questions just to get to know him a little bit more and a little bit more about the specialty. So thank you, Dr. Moore, for joining us today. You're welcome. Um, so we're just going to get started um, by asking just a little bit about yourself, um, a little bit about your training, where you grew up, um, what led you here, et cetera. Okay. Um, I've been the head of rheumatology here for um, almost th 35 years now. Uh, I grew up in Southern Missouri. Uh, my dad died when I was nine. So my mom moved to St. Louis and taught school. I went to undergraduate at the University of Michigan and the University of Missouri and then medical school at St. Louis U. I did my residency at SLU and then I spent three years doing immunology and molecular biology at the Scripps Clinic. Um, I came back here and uh, subsequently have been here ever since. I've been offered many, many positions from different schools, but I've stayed at St. Louis U. Uh, I've published over 200 papers and over two, presented over 240 abstracts, and I've brought in about $8 million in research funds to the university. My research has basically been in juvenile arthritis, biomarkers, uh, connective tissue disease, uh, we have the largest uh, uh, children's arthritis center in the Midwest, and uh, we've built up quite a huge population of patients here in, with rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, connective tissue disease. I'm on many, I'm on three study sections at the NIH right now, and uh, I'm also national chairman for pediatric research for uh, reviewing pediatric research grants. Uh, some of you might see my wife around here. My wife is a nurse and she runs the dog therapy program. So our two Labradors are uh, sometimes in the hospital, uh, Louie and, and, uh, and uh, Petunia. So uh, we, uh, we, it's kind of a family affair. And I got back to St. Louis and I've done, uh, I've not only have I been a teacher and doing research, I also has been many years, I coach girls soccer and softball. I have four daughters. and. Of uh, course, select soccer, soccer and softball. So that's kind of a thumbnail sketch of my my life at this point. <laughs> no, that's awesome, and um, we'd love to ask you some more questions about that. But first, can you tell our students a little bit about um, what rheumatology is, um, and you know, what does your workload and schedule look like? Rheumatology and immunology is probably the most basic immunology, molecular biology subspecialty. Uh, you have to be trained and really like a lot about immunology, basic uh, T and B cell uh, immunology, uh, immune complexes. Uh, that's what led me to that. I was I went to medical school. I wanted to be a faculty member. I wanted to be in academic medicine. Uh, when I was a third year medical student, I started working in the labs here and I actually published a couple of papers before I graduated from medical school. Um, Rheumatology is, is a pretty good subspecialty in the fact that there's most of it is a thinking discipline. We don't have a lot of uh, 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 procedures that may unfortunately make a lot of money, so we don't make a lot of money, but we, we, we found out that we make about $15 for every dollar we bill to the medical center. Uh, it's a, you know, the workload, uh, usually what we try to do is see 50 to 60 patients per week, follow-ups. Uh, 10 to 12 new patients. Uh, unfortunately, that's one of the problems in rheumatology. I've trained over almost 80 rheumatologists now across the country and across the world, uh, but uh, there's a very lack of this subspecialty. In fact, with pediatric rheumatology, there's still eight states that don't even have a pediatric rheumatologist. Um, it is a discipline. It's uh, a good lifestyle, though, because most of the patients are between eight and six, and so you can actually coach soccer or softball at night and, uh, and a, a family life. So, uh, but uh, we, we, I've been, we've been the last few years trying to promote um, getting more young medical students interested in rheumatology and immunology because by 2028, we figure there are only going to be about 40% of the rheumatologists needed to take care of the patients in the United States. No, absolutely. That sounds great. And then what would you say is kind of, you know, the most, um, I guess, standard presentation of patients that you see, or what kind of patients do you see most commonly in your specialty? 
Uh, most commonly, uh, basically, if you look at what we deal with, about 90% of our patients are female. Uh, uh, it's lupus, rheumat is the most common young disease of young females. Uh, the majority of patients are between 15 and 40, uh, come in with you know, joint pain or arthralgias, maybe skin rashes. Uh, the most common things that we see for as consult is uh, primary care pediatricians, internists will check a an antinuclear antibody and that test will be positive. Uh, it's positive in many of the general population, but it is a screening test for connective tissue disease. We also see a lot of young children and young adults with what's called hypermobility syndrome there. They get arthralgias just because of their hypermobility. And so uh, that's kind of the most common things. Uh, we do see a lot of uh, vasculitis, scleroderma and other things, but those are the two most common things. Okay, awesome. Um, how did you know that the specialty was right for you? Um, I guess like, were you deciding between multiple or did you always know that you were kind of leaning towards rheumatology or did you figure it out in residency or how did that? I actually figured it out when I was a second and third year medical student. I, I knew, I, like I said before, I wanted to go into academic medicine. I wanted to be a teacher and a researcher in the future um, and see patients at, the, at, a, at a university. I was, I took more of my electives in immunology, rheumatology, and infectious disease, and I was trying to be, decide between rheumatology and infectious disease, uh, and I ended up on rheumatology, even though I write two sections for up to date on all of viral arthritis, because I, my, uh, I've done a lot of work with Epstein-Barr virus, the virus that causes mononucleosis, and, and uh, those viruses that cause arthritis, so, but uh, it was just a an idea when I was third and fourth year medical student. That's awesome. Um, and then kind of transitioning off of that, now that you've had a great career with um, several experiences in the field, what do you love most about your job? And on the flip side, what do you uh, not so much like about your job? Okay. Um, the, if you, well, if you watch TV, you see all of, we have a, a plethora of new medicine since about 1998. Embrel, Humira, you see all the Skyrizi, Trimphia, all these new medications. Uh, what we first used to see in the late 80s, early 90s were patients with severe arthritis and, and uh, lupus patients in 1990, uh, five-year survival of a lupus patient was about 50%. In 2022, the five-year the 20-year survival is about 95%. So over the last few years with the development of different immunosuppressives and biologics, we've been able to really bring most, a lot of these diseases under control so that we don't see near the mortality and morbidity that we used to see. And that's, that's very satisfying. Some of the, the, one of the drawbacks is is there are not enough rheumatologists. We're booked up four to six months in advance. And it's kind of hard with trying to know that you want to get some of these patients in and which ones are, do, are being left behind because they're in, in line. So that's why we're trying to train more rheumatologists. Uh, again, there's the call and emergencies are not a real great in rheumatology. So it's not a drawback that you have, even though when you're on call, you're probably pretty much a working from eight in the morning to six at night. I have a follow-up question to that. So um, given what you said, where do you see the specialty going in the future? Do you see it more in the research setting or in the clinics? And like, you know, and how do you see the compensation for rheumatologists changing? Okay. Uh, that's one of the problems in rheumatology right now. Uh, I, I'm on study sections of the National Institute of Health. We review grants. A lot of money has been turned away from unfortunately, research in, in any subspecialty, especially rheumatology and immunology. So you're not going to see uh, a lot of patients uh, doing, uh, physicians doing both clinical and, clinical and research in the future. It's going to be basically clinical activities and transitional projects and not so much the basic projects. We're going to have to leave that to the PhDs, MD PhDs that uh, have time in the lab. Uh, so, uh, but we're hoping that we can uh, at least train more people so that we don't have such a big backup for every rheumatologist to, at waiting to see patients. So I think everyone on this call right now, including us, are all M1. So right now we're just kind of trying to figure out how to get through and also figure out what we want to do. 
um, with our lives <laughs> in, in the field of medicine. So looking back, um, back to when you're kind of in our shoes, is there anything you wish you would have known or anything that you wish you would have done differently when you were a medical student? Uh, yeah, I think one, one of the things is, is, is that uh, if you could figure out what you really want to do early on, uh, you can kind of guide yourself in your third and fourth year of medical school on what subjects you really, uh, what, what electives you need that would help you to get, so go into your, in, to your residency. Uh, you know, sometimes that wasn't too clear. And, you know, you were, work, you were going to school eight to five. We didn't have a, and luckily, most of ours were in-person lectures. So we were here eight to five. And uh, we, you know, we weren't able to um, uh, maybe see what we wanted in the future until maybe the third, late third or fourth year. So you would hope that at many times you can decide. And for, but again, you have to wait and see what your niche is. You know, there's always some area that each one of you will find that is this is what really excites you and what your niche is. And sometimes it occurs in the second, third, fourth, and sometimes it doesn't even occur until uh, your internal medicine, pediatric, or general residency that you know what you really want to do. But the earlier you find that, I think the way you can guide yourself. Cool. Um, and yeah, going off of that, uh, what do you think students can do now to kind of prepare for a career in rheumatology? Well, uh, one is, um, unfortunately, there's a, sometimes a drawback for, uh, we try to have some people shadow us in the first and second years. Uh, you know, if somebody's interested in, in laboratory work, we have room in our laboratory for some people to work. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, just, but the main thing in rheumatology is just trying to understand all basic immunology and microbiology early on so that you really have a basic understanding of the, of the basics of immunology and that will apply to helping you just uh, look at patients with lupus, connective tissue disease, and vasculitis. Okay, that was really helpful for us. Thank you. Um, kind of pivoting. Uh, I know you mentioned that you have four daughters and you also coach soccer, was it? Yes. Volleyball? Okay, so can you tell us a little bit more about that? And just, you know, all in all, what does life look like for you outside of medicine? Well, outside of medicine, uh, now I have a couple, a few grandchildren too. So, the, uh, but uh, in the past, it's been, you know, working here eight to six, eight to five, uh, then spending about two or three hours a night uh, uh, my girls' soccer and softball teams were select teams. They were going all over the country, so we had to travel quite a bit. Um, two of my daughters played college soccer. One played college softball. Um, they're all now they're getting their masters in teaching. But uh, you know, it was it was uh, it was the fact that rheumatology did usually let you get home at six o'clock at night, and if and it seems and, and well as. You as female students, uh, about 50 to 60 percent of our rheumatologists are now female uh, because it does lead to a pretty good lifestyle. You can see your patients do their things and still have time left over in the evening for, for your, uh, your uh, spouse and your children. Cool. That sounds great. Um, and then kind of just to, just to close off, do you have any last pieces of advice for medical students? Yeah, I think, you know, study hard, look, learn what you can, and try to find that which excites you, your niche. Uh, you know, I've had some of the guys in my classes in medical school, you know, uh, one's at the Mayo Clinic now, he struggled sometimes through medical school, and yet now he's a, he's a head of department at the Mayo Clinic because he found his niche later on in, in residency. It's finding that thing that excites you the most, uh, that makes you feel that you are really helping humanity and doing things and, and uh, just trying to find that area as, as best as you can. Awesome, I think that's great advice. Um, and do we have any questions from our um, and the people on our Zoom chat or on Facebook? Uh, you know, just you know, uh, you know, do do your best, basically. You know, I uh, uh, I think you'll all enjoy your medical school here. You have a a, a good a lot of different patients with the new hospital and everything. Uh, you know, it's a exciting new venue and everything and. Uh, we're, uh, we're building up some of the basic sciences research labs so that if somebody, some are in uh, uh, 
uh, act, interested in long-term research, we can get them involved early on. Okay, awesome. We have one question in the chat. Um, how does practice in an academic setting differ from private practice? Okay, well, the main difference is, is that in academics, you're going to be training medical students, residents, in, in teaching them immunology and rheumatology. Uh, I train, I have four fellows now that have completed internal medicine and pediatric training and are going on to, most of the time uh, we have, uh, you, you know, you either have internal medicine three years, pediatrics three years, or we too train med peds people, which are four years, and then they spend three years with us in rheumatology. So you're trained, you're, a lot of your time is spent you're going to spend about 50 to 60% of your time seeing patients and about the other 40% uh, training other, other uh, your fellows and other in, in teaching, whereas private practice is pretty much all just a clinical setting. Uh, you know, it's uh, pretty much four days a week of seeing patients um, uh, call sometimes at the university because we have a lot of different call cases. Uh, you know, we, we will take call every three or four months uh, out of the year. Uh, private practice, well, they'll still be covering like three of my, all four, all the uh, rheumatologists at Mercy are my former trainees and they will cover that hospital, but it's basically mostly just clinical and not any, really any teaching and other things that that in, that, in private practice. Well, thank you so much. Um, yeah, do we have any other questions from the chat? And if not, um, I know you have a meeting to get to, so we won't hold you for too long. All right. I thank you uh, again. If anybody has any questions, my office and my labs are in the medical school. Uh, my office is 211 Doisy Hall, the back of the second floor of the medical school. And, you know, we're always around here, usually from eight to six. To, if anybody has questions or just like to, to learn a little bit more about rheumatology. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Moore. All right, everybody have a good day. All right. Thank you. Thank you.